mercies are new every morning. We stand in your love this morning. We come to worship you in this place. Lord, we come to lift our hearts to you, our voices, our hands, Lord, all that is within us. We bless your holy name. May your spirit fall. Move amongst us this morning, Lord God, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. new day therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has gone the new has come all this is from God who is in Christ reconciling the world to himself and not counting our sins against us it's a brand new day give the Lord Jesus a great big hand clap this morning good morning welcome to beautiful Baldivis the fastest growing area in Australia yeah Baldivians, move around, say hello to as many people as you can. Find the All righty, please find a seat. Please find a seat. Take take a seat and be seated. We've just had the kids' church people come over, and when they come over, there's something happening in the house. And this morning, we're going to be baptizing a number of people. They're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ through the waters of baptism. You know, the Great Commission, Matthew 28 18 to 20, Jesus is about to depart and ascend to heaven, and he takes his disciples aside and has his last words with him. He says, you know, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you even to the close of the age. And uh, 
you know, the one command in that great commission is to make disciples, and the first aspect of that is baptism. So baptism isn't like a graduation certificate. It's like a beginning certificate. It's like saying, I'm going down the pathway that Jesus is calling me to go down. And I want to read to you from uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 5, where the Apostle Paul writes, Well, don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus? We're baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism in death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. And so baptism, you know, believers' baptism is, is, the, is the perfect way to signify unity with Christ in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And so uh, when, we, when that person goes under the water, that's signifying their unity with Jesus by faith, their unity with him in death and burial. And praise God, they come up out of the water and they signify their unity with him in resurrection. It's an exciting time, folks, and uh, I, I, there's a number of people being baptized this morning. So would you all come on up here? Pastor Leith is going to pray for you in a moment. So come on up, join with me. Give them a big round of applause they come. <laughs> and if there are any more, just come on up and join us, all right? No, Pastor Relief here, pray for it. Join us in prayer, folks. And if you're comfortable with this, stretch out your hands uh, towards the folk who are being baptized and join us in this prayer in Jesus' name. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these wonderful people. I thank you that they have chosen to um, live their lives for you and they've chosen to declare that publicly today, Lord. I just pray as they go through the waters of baptism that this is the beginning of their journey, that they will go and do great things for you and all for the glory of your kingdom. In your name, amen. Amen. Folks, as the, the people are getting baptized, they're going to come on over here. Give them another big uh, encouragement this morning. Come on over, folks. love Taylor. Okay, so Taylor, I have two questions for you. First, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and accept him as your Lord and Saviour? I do. Do you promise to serve him in his church for the rest of your life? I do. Upon your confession of faith, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. seeing double this is Paige her sister so Paige do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and accept him as your Lord and Savior I do do you promise to serve him in his church for the rest of your life I do upon your confession of faith I now baptize you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Mr. Jake Orshart, and I've got two questions for you this morning, Jake, as you follow the Lord Jesus Christ through the waters of baptism. The first question, do you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and accept him as your Lord and Saviour? I do. And do you promise to serve him all the days of your life in his church? I do. Upon your profession of faith, I now baptise in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
folks, this is Alicia. And Alicia, two questions for you. Uh, do you. Do you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and accept him as your Lord and Saviour? I do. And do you promise to serve him all the days of your life in his church? I do. Upon your profession of faith, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Poi. Poi, it's water's nice and warm, isn't it? Yeah, we warmed up just for you. <laughs> Two questions for you. Do you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and accept him as your Lord and Saviour? I do. And you promise to serve him all the days of your life in his church? I do. Upon your profession of faith, I now baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On your feet, church. It's a happy day. Let's give voice to that. Praise the Lord. What a glorious day for baptisms. What a glorious day to have in the house of God. Please be seated, church. On your way in this morning, you've received the newsletter. I want to encourage you during this time to check that out. Have a look. See what's in there. See what's coming up. Everything begins again this week. Connect groups are back, youth is back, coffee shop is back, so you'll find all the information in your newsletter. Also in there you'll find your care card. Now we use the care card for communication with the life of the church, so if you're new with us this morning and you want to let us know, then please use that care card and pop it in the offering buckets as they go around. Otherwise you could use it to send a, an encouraging note to those who have got baptised or to somebody else, who, however the Lord leads you. Meanwhile, church news will be on the screen. What a beautiful song. Church, as we prepare to bring our tithes and our offerings before God, I'd just like to read to you something that uh, Pastor Rick Warren and what he has to say on tithing. Deuteronomy 14.23 says, The purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. Tithing is the spiritual habit of giving back to God the first 10% of all that we make. Why do that? Because God says so. And that should be reason enough. If you don't do it, you're disobeying God. But there's another reason. Jesus says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And that's from Matthew 6, 21. Pastor Rick says, the reason I tithe is to draw me closer to God. The Bible says, wherever you put your money, that's where your heart will be. If I put my money in a boat, that's where my affection goes. Wherever I put my money, that's what becomes important in my life. That's what becomes important to me. If I put God first, when it comes to my money, it says, God, you're first in my life. If you show me how you spend your time and how you spend your money, I'll show you what's important in your life. Show me your schedule, show me your checkbook stubs, and no matter what you say is important, I'll tell you what is really important to you. Today's verse explains that the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your life. If I say, God, I want you to be number one in my life, but he's the last place in my budget, then that's a contradiction. The issue here is where you place God in your list of priorities. Your finances simply reflect, reflect what those priorities are. Church, let's stand. As we sing our next song, the offering buckets will be passed around. You can put your tithes and your offerings in there and your care cards go in there too. Please be seated. Well, folks, term two is right on us, and our connect groups are back. And if you're not in a connect group, you, you need to be. And uh, I just want to encourage you, if you're not in one, to come and seek me out after the service. 
come and find Gordon and I will direct you into a connect group because we've got, I think, 13 or 14 of them and you need to be in one of them. One in your area, wherever you might live. If there isn't one right in your suburb now, I can start one right there to bless you, okay? So it's all term two is about to start and coffee shop is back this Friday and you can drop your kids off and pick your kids up and drop your kids off again and pick your kids up again. And if you've got all those generations, you can do it three times and you can sit around and have a coffee and a biscuit. <laughs> I'll find you there, all right? I, I just want to commend all of us to the Lord, term two starting, and we just sang the surrender song, and it just could be, it just could be that there are folk right in this auditorium this morning and you're wrestling with stuff that would keep you from where you should be you know, in God's economy, traveling down the pathway that God would have you to travel down. And you know, you know our, our, our mission statement is showing people all they can become in Christ. And there are all sorts of things that will come up in your little pathway to derail you from that. They just do. So I want to pray against that right now. Father in heaven, uh, whatever stumbling block, whatever blockage, whatever little obstacle would stand in our way to trip us up from becoming all that we can become in Christ. Uh, Father, I'm, I'm praying this morning that if that's any individual in this house and there's a stumbling block right there now, uh, an obstacle of any kind, something that would trip a person up, that you would alert that person to what it is this morning and through the course of uh, our message this morning, Holy Spirit, that you would speak life into each, each person here, that, that you would speak empowerment into each life. Holy Spirit, that you would enable a person to deal with a thing that's standing in the way of becoming all that they can become in our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, uh, I, I, I commend the people here in this auditorium to you this morning. Work in our midst powerfully this morning so that when we leave from here this morning, we will know for sure that we have met with the living God. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Hey, uh, most people have a, a feature or an idiosyncrasy that makes them readily identifiable, right? That's, that's just the way it is. Uh, the, you know, the sort of things that cartoonists have a field day with, you know, uh, a, a kind of a caricature uh, to, to make a cartoonist embellishment. A and I think about our Prime Minister. And, you know, the cartoonists have a field day. Obviously, the red hair, they work straight on that one. That's a feature. She has red hair and she has a nose that is kind of hey, prominent. Yeah. And, and they work on that one. So whatever it is, you, you have something like that. And people will think of you like that. Uh, how many of you ever watch uh, the, la the latest voice program on Channel 9? Any, any of you be watching that? Uh, those of you uh, are lying, that's okay. You're in the house of the Lord. Uh, uh, you know, there's one guy on there and he's got a voice. And when he sings, he's got fine timber in the voice. When he speaks, he what? Started. See, you remember. So you've identified him by, not by the fine voice, but by the stutter. And, and some of you that said that said you hadn't watched it. So, Lord... <laughs> Lord, work in our midst this morning. I know what that stumbling block is. You know, it could be a recurring gesture, you know, that people have. Uh, colour of their hair, a habit, you know, uh, like they're always pulling their ear or something like that, you know. Uh, a style of doing things, you know. Or, or it could be, you would say, no, I know them by their music. They're always singing. We have someone on our staff. Every time they come in, they're singing. If they're not singing, there's something wrong in that person's arena. They are a singing person. They come in and they sing. Uh, and, and there are people, you know, with a, with a feature, even from a distance, uh, you, you know, you, you would know who that is by the way that they walk, by the way they walk, you know, or, or by the way they wear their hair, you know. Uh, and you would say, I, I think that's so-and-so by the way they run. I, I think that is so-and-so by the fine timber in their voice, you know, like that. How many of you... How many of you Ever been to New South Wales? Uh, you, 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 well, some of you need to travel a bit. And uh, how many have ever been to Coonabarabran? Yes. How many have been to Gilgandra, which is near Coonabarabran? I, my, all my family have, because 
we used to do the trip from Perth to Brisbane and we would go over and through Broken Hill and then along the Barrier Highway and then we'd cut up to Queensland through Coonabarabran and Gilgandra and we'd often stay in Gilgandra or Coonabarabran in on-site caravan, in on-site caravans and, uh, and I remember this particular time uh, where I'm w waking up in the morning and, and my kids are saying to their mother, Dad's outside selling milk. And then I heard it, Milko! And I thought, I am, I'm outside selling milk. I, it, it was just like me, it was my voice. And I thought, if I didn't know better, I'd think I'm outside selling milk. So what will you be known by? Selling milk or a fine timber in the voice? What will you be known by? What is it you'll be known by? King Joram of Israel, he was the son of Ahab and Jezebel, and they're probably the most evil uh, king and queen in your Bible, they were just bad people, and uh, Joram was not a good king either, he was bad, just like mum and dad, and, and a prophet had set up a man by the name of Jehu to assassinate King Joram and take the throne from him. And so once Jehu had got his supporters on board about assassinating King Joram, he got in his chariot and, and he drove full speed out to Jezreel uh, to do the job and his army, his troops were marching out there and from the watchtower at Jezreel, King Joram's watchman in the watchtower, he could see what's going on and so King Joram said, whose troops are they that are approaching and who is that in the chariot? Uh, 2 Kings 9.20 is the watchman's word. He said, the driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nimshi. He drives like a maniac. This is thousands of years ago. And he was known as the man who drove like a maniac. What, what will you be known by? What will you be known by? Luke 6.44, each tree is known by its fruit. Uh, if, if the tree has oranges hanging from it, it is not an apple tree. If the tree only ever has one orange hanging from it, it's not a very fruitful orange tree. If the tree has shriveled up oranges hanging from it, it it's, it's not the kind of orange tree you want. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the tree never has any fruit hanging from it, it's a fruitless tree and it's taking up space. What will you be known by? Each tree is known by its fruit. Proverbs 20 and verse 11. Even a child is known by his actions. Uh, the old, that's the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew and, uh, and the construction of this sentence in Hebrew literally gives us this. Even in his doings, a child is known. Or, uh, as another uh, commentator would say of that, even in his play, a child makes himself known. And, and you can watch this over in our sandpit in our children's ministry centre and uh, there's play going on over there every Sunday, uh, and there's play going on over there every Tuesday in playgroup, every Wednesday in playgroup, every Thursday in playgroup, and then it all happens again on Friday uh, for, for Kids Club, and, and you see a lot of kids playing over there. And uh, the proverb says, even a child is known by the way he plays. Even a child. So you, you watch this, and, and you see some kids have a, a, a propensity towards disruption. You might have noticed that. You say, that's my kid. All right. Some kids in that situation take the leader's role and try to sort it all out. You'll notice that even in the play place. Uh, some kids will show an artistic flair uh, by what they draw in the sand. Uh, some show aggression. They're happiest when they're beating some other kid up. <laughs> and some kids do not show aggression. They're the ones that are getting beaten up. Proverbs 20.11, in the good news, even children show what they are by what they do. You can tell if they are honest and good. What will you be known by? And you know, I think about this. Will you be known by your courage? Will you be known by your generosity? Will you be known by your optimism? Or will you be known by something the opposite of that, negativity? Will you be known by boldness? Will you be known by compassion? What will you be known by? Proverbs 10, 9 in the New King James says, He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become 
known. He'll become known because he perverts his ways, or as the NIV says, he walks crooked paths. Uh, Proverbs 10:19 in the NIV, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. That's what he'll be known by. And so here are your choices. Uh, you can walk with integrity or you can walk crooked paths or the good news says walk with dishonesty. And uh, I, I, was, I was preparing this before I did last Sunday's message and I got so excited about this that I wove a little bit of this into last Sunday's message. I just sort of went for it. And, and uh, this is kind of revelation here, so you need to hang by. There was a crooked man and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence. It, 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 you know what a sixpence is? Anyone here? Exactly. Yeah, that's money. That's money. A silver little coin. Beside a crooked style. And he bought a crooked cat uh, with sixpence. It'll be a crooked cat, I can assure you of that. Uh, 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 who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a crooked little house. How did this crooked little man come by crooked money to make a crooked purchase? It's a, it's a big question. And you think, I haven't departed from the proverb. Crooked is, is a very interesting word, you know. It, it, the dictionary tells us it means not straight, uh, bent, twisted. So this crooked little man is bent and twisted. And, and you'll find uh, the word crook, the word crook, uh, other than the shepherd's crook, refers to a person who is a cheat, who is a dishonest person, who is a swindler, and who is an embezzler. Are you with me? And when used in this way, the word is a derivative, the word crook is a derivative of the word crooked. The crook deals with you and with society in crooked ways. And so we come to the Australian colloquialism, and we as, as Australians have invented a whole new language or use words in a different way than the rest of people in the rest of the English world do. And we, we, we you know, someone that's done a job that is less than satisfactory in collo a colloquial Australian, we will say he did a crook job. It was a crook job. It, you know, it's a bodgy kind of job. That's what we mean by that. It was a tacky job. It was a bad job. It was shoddy. It was shabby. It wasn't a good job. It was a crook job. And so a crook deals in crooked ways, walks a crooked path, uh, walks a crooked mile, finds crooked money, and uh, he is known for his crooked ways. And so Channel 7 and Channel 9 and your 6.30 or 7 o'clock show, uh, that, that they, they, will, they will work this. Uh, they, their whole show is made up of the fact that there are crooks around. Both of those programs, you know, the Today Tonight on Channel 7 and the Current Affair on Channel 9, uh, they are devoted to informing us about salesmen and tradesmen and would-be entrepreneurs who walk in crooked ways and thus rip off the people that they deal with. Are you with me here? So Proverbs 10 verse 9 in the NIV, whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. So if you walk crooked paths and pervert uh, your ways, you will be found out and you will be Become known by that pattern. So my question again, what will you be known by? What will you be known by? Oh, he's the, he's the tradesman who did the dodgy job. He's the tradie who did a crook job. Laura and I had roast lamb on Friday night, and it's good to have roast lamb. We had someone around to help us eat the roast lamb and had a couple around, and, and we took a little stroll with a couple out the back to brag on our house and and the guy commented on our decking, you know. And I've got to tell you, our decking was done by a tradie from this church. And it is millimetre perfect. And so we commented on that. Wouldn't it have been a shame if he said, that's a dodgy job, who did that? <laughs> and so, well, you'll know him by his, you know, you know what will he be known by? How about being known as a person who can be counted on? How about that? In Christian circles in the whole greater Rockingham area, I, I am known in, in other churches as the bishop. I don't, I don't know if you know that. Uh, myself and the staff from this church, we go to Rockingham Ministers Fellowship once a month. And uh, we're going Wednesday, guys. And, uh, and they call me the bishop. 
And I know when, when they first come, my staff, they've never heard this before they come, and someone will say, well, I'll get the bishop to pray. And they, they, they who's, who's the bishop going to be? And then I pray. And they oh, he's the bishop. <laughs> Why didn't we know that? I, 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 am, I am the bishop, you know. And, and the reason that they call me that is because I'm the longest serving pastor in this community, in this district. I just keep on staying on and on and on and on and on. I am known as the longest serving pastor in this district. And you know and I know some people who are known for not sticking at anything. And you'll know them by that. you say that they never stick at anything. Uh, now I, I want to be known as the person who can be counted on. And I would want you to, 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 be, to, to think I, that you would want to be known as the person who can be counted on. You know, the person who is consistent, the person who doesn't take the shortcut, uh, the person who doesn't shortchange you, the person who is dependable, the person who is honest, and the person who deals with you in integrity. And with integrity comes security. Proverbs 10, 9, and the first part of that verse, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. Uh, the word integrity is re related to the word integral, you know. Uh, with integrity, all the integral parts are there. There's nothing missing. And with integrity, there is wholeness. With integrity, there is moral uprightness. Uh, with, with integrity, there is ethical uprightness. And so Proverbs 11.3 says the integrity of the upright guides him. Guides him. Think about this. Think about this. The integrity of the upright guides him. So you get into a sticky situation, what am I going to do? Well, the integrity of the upright guides him. Uh, you know uh, the story of Joseph in, in the book of Genesis? He's the guy that had the sun, the moon, and the stars bowing down to him. And that was like his brothers bowing down to him and he made the mistake of telling them. They despised him. They put him down a well just to treat him a lesson. And then they figured they could make some money out of him. So they sold him into slavery in Egypt. And he goes to Egypt and he makes good because the favor of God is on him in spite of all the things that are against him. And he gets, uh, he, he gets employed by uh, a, a businessman by the name of Potiphar in Egypt and uh, all is going well and he's getting promoted and things are going good. But he's a good looking dude. A man, if you're good looking, you just can't help that, can you? You happen to be good looking. And Mrs. Potiphar is probably a good looking woman. And she takes her fancy uh, to Joseph and she wants to have her way with him. And see, the integrity of the upright guide them. And you know what happened. She kept on putting the word on him to have her way with him and, and to make hanky-panky with him. And he ran from the house because the integrity of the upright guides them. I think about other characters in the Bible and maybe they didn't have that same integrity of the upright that guided them. Think about Samson and David. You know, you know I, I heard a preacher say this of both of those boys. They said, you know, both of those boys had enough testosterone to kickstart a dead elephant. <laughs> they had no lazy libido. And so uh, when, when the temptation came and uh, there's a handsome woman and a handsome King David, uh, he, he, the integrity of the, uh, of the upright did not guide him because that integrity wasn't there. And with Samson, Samson had his way with so many women, there was no integrity of the upright that guided him. It wasn't as if Joseph didn't have sex drive. It was that integrity reigned in his sex drive and guided him. With integrity comes security. If you walk the crooked path where well, you have to tell a lie to cover your tracks, and then tell another lie to cover the lie that you're told to cover your tracks, uh, then, then you have to remember who you told the lies to. And of course, this will undermine your security because you won't remember who you told what to and then you can't get it right and you're going to get found out. But if your life is straight and your speech is straight, then you'll never have to fear being found out because there are no crooked things that are hidden, no crooked paths. That's why the person who lives a life of integrity lives a life of security. He's he got nothing to hide. You see, what, what you see is what you get. What you see, and, and that's what we're talking about this morning. What will you be known by? What will you be known by? When you walk the path of integrity, you have confidence. Psalm 41 verse 12, In my integrity, uh, Lord, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. See, that's confidence. When you walk the path of integrity, rather than walking the crooked path, you have protection. Psalm 25 verse 21, My integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. Uh, Proverbs 13, 6, righteousness guards the man of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Integrity brings the security 
of protection. It's kind of like when you operate by interior, that's like you're building a, a, a safe wall around you so that no one can penetrate and mess with you because you've operated your life with integrity. But if you operate uh, on a crooked path, well, well then, then you've got stuff to hide. When you walk the path of integrity rather than crooked paths, you also set yourself up for ongoing blessing. What will you be known by? 1 Kings 9, 4, God speaking to Solomon. He said, as for you, if you walk before me in integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, apart from when he ran off with women he shouldn't have, uh, and, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel for a day. You are so quiet this morning. And I'm preaching so well. And I'm getting nothing back. I will establish your yeah. <laughs> I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. For Solomon, integrity meant ongoing blessing. And, and integrity does, means that for you. So Proverbs 10:9, where we were before in the New King James, he who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will be known, or NIV walks the crooked paths. So what will you be known by? What will you be known by? Integrity? Crooked ways, integrity brings with it security, confidence, protection, ongoing blessing. You know, think about crooked ways, crooked ways. Uh, you'll be exposed if you walk crooked ways. You'll be found out as a crooked person. And I think about uh, the, the old proverb that's not in the Bible, you know, there was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. Uh, and he, uh, a crooked person, he's just a crook. And he found a crooked sixpence, uh, dishonest financial dealings. Uh, crooked style, dishonest boundaries, crooked cat and crooked mouse. Oh, who knows? I don't want them in my house, either of them, all right? <laughs> the neighbor can have the cat and will keep the mice away from my place. Crooked house is a house of disrepute and dishonesty. What will you be known by? How about, how about being known by integrity, generosity, honesty, reliability, Optimism, encouragement, consistency, cooperation, dependability, faith, faithfulness, courage, and more optimism. How about that? How about being known as a person whose life has been totally turned around? Rather than pretend that I've got some religion, how about being known as the person whose life was turned around? Before I was going this way, then I met Jesus Christ and he turned me around. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God. Once I was going that way, now I'm going this way. Once I had a limited time-bound perspective, now I have an eternal perspective. Uh, once I was into me, and now I'm into all that God has for me. How about being known by that? In Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we began this morning by praying against any obstacles, stumbling blocks, anything that might stand in the way of any person uh, of this household of faith becoming all that you have planned for them to become in Jesus' name. And so in these closing moments, I'm praying, Holy Spirit, that you would sweep through this auditorium you would uncover the things that need to be uncovered and you would lift the people up that need to be lifted up, that you would set each one, set their, set their, set their feet on, on, a, on a straight path uh, that they might become and realise all that you have for them, uh, that, that their lives would be turned around, that uh, the negative people would become optimistic people, uh, uh, the people uh, who, who, who didn't have boldness will have courage and boldness, those who had no compassion, that you'll plant compassion in their hearts and lives this morning. Uh, those who need to be encouragers, that you would give them that word of encouragement for someone this morning. What will, what will they be known by, Father? What will the people of this church be known by? What will this church be known by? Make us to be that church, Father, that reaches out with a word of eternal life. Make us to be that church and make us to be those people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand, folks. You know the thing about God, you know what he's known by? He's known by so much, but he's known by the fact that his love never ends. It just never ends. It goes on and on and on. And God loves you so much, and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And uh, he so wants you to walk that pathway of, that he's got for you. He wants you to become all that you can become. 
But you know how it begins? It begins by surrendering to Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's a, that's a thing of surrender. You, know, you, you want to bask, you want to bask in, in the love that has no end, the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Some of you know what that's all about and you know that you've turned around, you've done a 180 degree turnaround and you're going the way that God's calling you to go. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you would like to know. Uh, some of you want that and you need to step into it. And this morning I'm going to invite you to either step into that or find out more about it. And, and you can do that, you know, talk to God where you are in the body of the auditorium. But I'm going to encourage you to come right down the front this morning and, and seek the face of God. And you come to meet with God, you know, when you come down the front. We call it an altar call. It's kind of like holy ground. And if God's putting a call on your life and you're sensing that right now, the Holy Spirit's nudging you, don't walk out of here this morning without dealing with that. I'm encouraging you to come and walk down the front this morning in Jesus' name. Let's sing our song. And as God calls you, you step out this morning. Let's sing. Father, your love knows no end. It's never ending. Love is eternal. Your love is everlasting. It's forever and ever. Father, as we all stand here in your presence this morning, we want to bask in that never-ending love. We want to be known as those who love our Lord and our God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit, touch every individual in the house this morning in such a powerful way. They'll know for sure they've had an encounter with you, Holy Spirit. Lord God, I commend everyone here to you that they might know your grace, uh, your empowerment, that they might know your nearness, your presence, not just in these moments, but in an ongoing way through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Folks, just before you move, I need to tell you this now is a place of ministry and here, so any conversations you began or want to begin, uh, begin those or continue them in the foyer or in the coffee shop or in the bookshop. By the way, a whole new lot of books in the bookshop, so you might want to go and suss that out. They came during the week, so you go and sort that out. And if you haven't yet got your breaking intimidation material for Connect Group, get hold of that. And if you're not in a Connect Group, come and find me. Uh, I'll be out in the coffee shop or wandering around somewhere and I will get you into a Connect Group. Uh, so but that's the place for you to hang out and uh, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a, a muffin. You met someone new this morning, get them a coffee, get them a muffin, look out for them, would you do that? Uh, this area right over in this corner, the other side of the baptistry here, we call that prayer corner. If you're needing prayer this morning for anything, make your way over to prayer corner and there'll be folk there to pray with you and for you and to encourage you in Jesus' name. Check out your bookshop, check out your coffee shop, have a fantastic day. Got a great service here tonight at 6 o'clock and uh, we're, we're dealing with the issue of eternal life. Come and be blessed by that tonight. Have a fantastic day. Look forward to seeing you again soon.